Okay, good afternoon. I'm Assistant Sheriff Brett Zimmerman, and I'm here to provide additional details as we know them today about the officer-involved shooting that we investigated on April 6, 2018. Before I discuss the facts of this case, I want to briefly discuss a scenario officers deal with, it, deal with it on almost every shift that we call a routine traffic stop. We hear that term often in public discussion, but in law enforcement, we know there is no such thing as a routine stop. Every call for service or officer-initiated call has the potential to take a violent turn. We regularly train to not become complacent on any traffic stop on or on any other call we respond on, as there is always a potential for a routine stop to become anything but routine. I'm now going to go into the details on where we're at on OIS's year to date. We're at OIS number five and fatal number three. And at this time last year, we were at OIS number four and fatal, we had one at that time. The date and time of this call was on April 6, 2018 at 4.44 a.m. And that was a vehicle stop. And the location of the OIS was at 285 Madge Lane, which is located in the Northeast Area Command. Uh, the time of the OIS, we had shots fired at approximately 4.47 a.m. Our involved officers are Officer Francisco Rivera. He's 28 years of age, and he's been with LVMPD since, the, since May of 2016. He is currently assigned to the Community Policing Division at the Northeast Area Command. In this incident, Officer Rivera was armed with a Glock 17 9 millimeter handgun equipped with a tactical light. The investigation revealed that Officer Rivera fired two rounds during this incident. The second officer involved was Officer Padilla Mills. He's 23 years of age, and he's been with LVMPD since May of 2016. He is currently assigned to the Community Policing Division at the Northeast Area Command also. In this incident, Officer Mills was armed with a Glock 17 9 millimeter handgun with a tactical light. Officer Rivera, I'm sorry, Officer Mills fired two rounds during this incident. Officer Rivera and Officer Mills were both wearing their body-worn cameras and they were both activated during this incident. I will show you the videos at the conclusion of my remarks. Our suspect in this incident was Junior David Lopez. He is a 22-year-old Hispanic male adult, 5 foot 6, 220 pounds. Lopez is pictured to the left of the screen. Lopez's criminal history is he had a prior for false statement to a PO slash obstructing in North Las Vegas in 2016. Lopez's charges if he'd survived the incident were reckless driving, an assault with a deadly weapon on a protected person with a firearm of two counts. Lopez's weapon, and the photo is to my left, was a Smith & Wesson Bodyguard Semi-Auto 380 handgun. Lopez's gun was loaded with six 380 rounds, five in the magazine, and one in the chamber. Our details of the OIS go as follows. On Friday, April 6, 2018, at approximately 4.44 a.m., Officer Rivera and Mills were operating as a two-officer marked patrol unit and were in the area of Madge Lane and Mabel Road. They had been on their way to a suspicious person call at another lo location when they conducted a vehicle stop on a blue Chrysler 300 that was speeding and driving recklessly near that intersection. The vehicle came to a stop at the front of 28258 Madge Lane. Both officers exited the patrol vehicle just before Lopez got out of the driver's side of his vehicle. Officers asked Lopez to get back into the car. As Lopez was getting out, he dropped a small black handgun onto the asphalt a few feet away from him. Lopez went down to his knees and both officers gave multiple commands to not move towards the handgun. As officers continued to issue verbal commands for Lopez to get away from the gun, Lopez can be heard on the body-worn camera video saying, shoot me twice. Lopez had his hands out in front of him and reached towards the handgun that was lying in front of him on the ground. Officers continued to give commands to Lopez to not move toward or touch the handgun. 
Lopez reached forward, picked the gun up off the ground, and began to raise his arm. Both officers fired rounds from their duty weapons at Lopez, and Lopez fell to the, Lopez fell to the ground and rolled to his back. Officers continued to give commands to Lopez not to reach for the gun, which was again only a foot away from him. Lopez then rolled to his stomach and reached out towards the gun, whereupon Officer Mills fired one additional round striking Lopez. Officer summoned medical personnel immediately and continued to shout commands to Lopez. Backup units arrived and Lopez was subsequently taken into custody. He was transported to Sunrise Trauma where he was pronounced deceased at 5.15 a.m. Additionally, two women were in Lopez's vehicle during the incident. They were not injured. One of the females was Lopez's girlfriend and the registered owner of the vehicle that they were stopped in. The second female was identified, however, refused to cooperate with detectives. I will now show you the video obtained from Officer Rivera's body-worn camera. And just remember the first 30 seconds, there's no sound. Uh, it kicks in at about 30 seconds. Hey, what are you doing? Stay in the car, man. Stay in the fucking car. Don't move. Do not fucking move. Hey, get away from the gun. Do not move. Don't reach for the gun, man. Do not reach the gun. Okay, I will now show you the video obtained from Officer Mills' body-worn camera, which is uh, from the passenger side angle of the vehicle. And again, about 30 seconds in, the sound will kick in. We're going to need medical for the subject. Reach He's reaching. Me. Don't reach for it. Okay, we're going to need uh, medical for the subject. Looks like he has a GSW to his chest. Be advised the 413 uh, is within two feet of him still. Hey, back up, bro. Just back up a little bit. Be advised there's a female in the car right now. She's just screaming. Unknown if she has any medical needs right now. His 413 is about one foot from his left Don't hand. Speak. Don't! Don't fucking do that! Okay, I'll now answer any questions that anybody has. Is, is it possible that there was a language barrier here? I, mean, I didn't hear him uh, yell, shoot me, shoot me, but did he speak English? He... Yes, we, we, we were able to ascertain that from the witnesses hey, what... in the vehicle. How many times was he hit? Uh... I believe three, three times. Yes, sir. On which camera were we able to hear him say, shoot me, shoot me? Uh, that would have been on the first, first video. Uh, that was the initial, uh, the first one I, show, I had shown when he had got out. You have to listen to, carefully to hear it, but when the sound if kicked we, in. If we can play the side by side, then you can. Okay. That, sure. Hey, what are you doing? Stay in the car, man. Stay in the fucking car. Don't move. Do not fucking move. Hey, get Shoot away me. from the gun. Do not move. Me. Don't reach for the gun, man. Do not reach the gun. Shot fired. Don't reach for the gun. Do not reach the gun. Yes, sir. Where was he hit? On his body. Uh, I believe the fatal round was up here on the one of the shoulder one of the shoulders that was at the top above the uh, above the chest area, but that was what I think they determined was the fatal round. Was there any indication that he may have been impaired? We don't know that. The only information we had was they were the only information we got was they were out in the downtown area prior to prior to the shooting. Yes, sir. Based on those statements, do you believe this was suicide by cop, or would he have any? I mean, I mean, look, he's, he said, shoot me. 
He also had, had our, our cops gave numerous commands to not reach for the weapon. He reached for the weapon after he was shot. I mean, I don't know what was going through his head, but he was given ample opportunity to be taken into custody, and he wasn't.